Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to COVID-19, how to build and enhance your immune system with food, herbs, plants, and essential oils. This program is brought to you by the Friends of the James Brown African American Room and the Newark Public Library, and we are delighted to partner with Newark SAS. My name is Dale Colston, and I'm the Principal Librarian at the James Brown African American Room of the Newark Public Library in Newark, New Jersey. Tonight, I'm joined by my co-host, Linda McDonald Carter, my colleague, Reggie Blanding, and my colleague, Beth Zach Cohen, who are lending technical support behind the scenes. I thank all of them. Our space at the library was named in honor of the late James Library Brown, a librarian, poet, activist, and influencer who was instrumental in making sure that the library seek and maintain books and resources and present programs examining and celebrating the African-American experience. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Lenny Lenape First Nations on which we are learning, labeling, and organizing today. We also recognize the devastation and the continued legacy of the transatlantic slave trade, which contributed to present-day systemic racism and oppression. We, of course, want to acknowledge the lives of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and countless others. We are working to honor their legacy. Black Lives Matter. May I remind you, if you have not done so already, to please fill out your census form today. We need to be counted. Emergencies like the COVID-19 pandemic are precisely why the government needs accurate census data. Public health experts, Government officials and first responders all rely on population data to make critical decisions in crises like the one we are experiencing right now. Results affect our community every day. So please visit my2020census.gov to fill out the census online. Again, please be counted. The for the evening, Linda McDonald Carter is an attorney and professor of paralegal studies at Essex County College. She is also a member of the Friends, a founding member, pardon me, of the Friends of the James Brown African American Room. Please join me in welcoming Linda McDonald Carter. Linda. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, everyone. So I'm going to introduce our esteemed guests. First, we have Roxana Marrow King. She's a MS LCAT LP. Uh, is an artist, art therapist, herbalist, a facilitator, and community gardener with extensive experience working with different mediums and populations, who brings her expertise to Newark Science and Sustainability, Inc. She's also found founder of, oh, uh, here we go, uh, Aguage de Hoda. Did I do that? I, I kind of, all right, but I got it out. Okay. Where she provides a line of herbal medicine and consultation. We also have Aurelis Hernandez. Ms. Hernandez is a licensed professional counselor, certified yoga instructor, and Arvita lifestyle coach. Traditional healing has been part of her lifestyle from early on in the Dominican Republic, leading her to love, to her love and interest in plant medicine. Uh, in 2013, Aurelis and her husband, Kevin Porter, who I see on the left, uh, created Rabbit Hole Farm, a community garden based in Newark whose mission is to promote a more conscious lifestyle by connecting to nature and municipal, medicinal plants. Thank you guys for joining us. I, I actually had the opportunity to see Roxana once before. With, is that your son or your daughter? Son? Okay, so this is, this is really nice. And I'm really happy to have somebody come in and talk about plants because they're really important regarding viruses. Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies, so we're gonna start out with um, Roxana. Okay. Thank you, Dale and Linda, for those introductions. Um, really grateful to be here, really excited. And um, thank you, Newark Sass, for inviting us, for having us here. And we're going to jump right into our presentation. Okay. So we're going to take a few deep breaths. And this is just to connect. So even though we're not face to face, we are still connecting. So let's just take a few deep breaths, inhaling in and exhaling. 
as a way of coming present with each other and just connecting. Even, even, even though we're in distance, we're still connected. So just inhale and exhale. Being in the present moment. Just one more inhale and exhale. And we will continue. Okay. So Rosanna. On mute now. Everyone okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Aurelis, for grounding us. Um, it's always good to connect ourselves to the earth and to our breath before we jump into um, the information, which we have a lot of stuff we want to get through. We, if we're running too fast, please feel free to ask questions on the chat, and we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. Um, but to begin, why are we here? We're here to talk about immunity and to give a brief overview of exactly what that means. Um, the immune system is how our body defends itself from any outside organisms and invaders. Um, the immune system is composed of cells, of tissues, different organs, different glands, as you see in the image there. Um, and yeah, it's a whole body effort to keep us healthy, right? So it's important, it's our first um, line of defense um, yeah, so let me see. I don't want to read the whole thing, but it is important to know that the way that it works, the immunity system works by producing antibodies that creates a protection against germs, foods, or other um, environmental agents. And, and that is what prevents any kinds of infections. And um, also another thing that the immune system does is when too many antibodies are made, that's when we have an allergic reaction. So we want to keep that in balance. Um, yeah. Arellis, do you want to add to this part? Um, I think um, also to talk about the skin, uh, mm -hmm. that we don't really think about the skin as a part of the immune system sometimes. And then, uh, you know, what we put in the body on, on, on our skin is very important as well when it comes to immunity. Because the skin is the larger um, organs and is protecting us also from getting invaded by um, um, germs and all the things. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, I just want to give an example, and this is the way that um, I was taught to think about the immune system. So when you imagine um, a body, an animal or a human body is dead, um, when everything breaks down, the immune system is no longer working, that's when um, it starts to decompose, right? So it's the immune system that keeps all those um, agents that are decomposing, keeps them away from our healthy body. So that helps to paint the picture of exactly how how it works. Okay, so let's move on to talk about the microbiome connection. Okay, so before we move to, to the microbiome, I just wanted to uh, say something real quick about Ayurveda. So Ayurveda is my background, uh, my, one of the biggest background that I have in the health. Uh, and um, I just wanted to say like an overview, like the, well, what is this and thing like that. So Ayurveda is the, the oldest medical system, basically. If you go back and do research, you can really see um, that Ayurveda being here for thousands of years, and it's, the, it's originally from India. Uh, and it's based, um, the meaning is basically Ayu means life, and Veda means knowledge. So it's the science or the knowledge of life. Okay, that's what it means. Okay, and it has to do with how we live, not only what we're taking. Uh, so before we're talking about herbs and anything like that, we're gonna be talking about lifestyle. What are the things that we're doing to help our health, okay? So um, that's just an overview. So like Rosanna said before, uh, your immune system doesn't start um, going out of balance just from one day to the next. It's just a process, okay? And that's what it, um, in Ayurveda, that's how we see it. Um, things to start from early on, okay? And then we get to the point that the immune system is too weak, okay? So we have to work on the, on the symptoms, what's going on, and find the, the root cause of, the, of the, what is this 
coming from, okay? And then uh, work with that. Okay, so what is the microbiome? Okay, so the microbiome is the, um, is the ecosystem of trillions of microorganisms in, the, in our digestive tract. Okay, so it's like on the intestine. So we usually are afraid of listening like, oh my God, bacteria, viruses, and all these things. But science now they, um, is um, showing that we are part of that, micro like that, um, that system, okay? So um, it's okay to have bacteria or like, like or, or bacteria is part of us, okay? So um, the microbiome is the, the whole bacteria in our system that keep, keep us healthy, but we have to have a balance. They are healthy and, and not so healthy bacteria. So when not so healthy bacteria take over, that's when imbalances start, okay? And the immune system will be uh, affected by that. So um, I uh, included three references that I've been studying from, uh, 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 the books actually, and they also are very, very good. How the microbiome affects basically any part of our body uh, from physical, psychological, and even I would say spiritual because if you don't feel well, your spirit is not going to feel well. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, that's the microbiome. So, for that now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you, Reles. It's really important to take our probiotics and prebiotics, right? And there's so much that we could like go into with that. Um, but for the sake of trying to give more information, we're going to keep going. Um, so, my background is in um, spiritual herbalism. That's what I studied. And what that means is that if we are working on healing our body, we need to think about how that connects um, both to our spirit and to our mind, our emotional self, right? Um, a lot of times we have issues with our gut and it has nothing to do with our diet. It has to do with nerves, things like that. So it's really important to think of health, not as like just got to take care of the body, but like what else is related to that that could be affecting the state of your systems. Um, so to give you a little information, um, spiritually, the immune system is connected to our protection, right? Keeping those germs out, keeping that bad bacteria out, which also relates to our boundaries. So how are we holding boundaries in our space, in our bodies, with other people in the world, especially nowadays, I would say with the news, how much are you taking in and how much you're um, letting influence you would definitely influence your immune system. Um, so it's always important to like you know be aware of like what you're taking in mentally and spiritually as well as physically um also the immune system is related to aura so if you're into auras and chakras then you'll um hear me when i say that if your aura is strong then your immune system is strong so even if you're not into that um just know that if you keep your immune system up like your emotional self is going to be up and like you're gonna have more energy overall um let me see. It's also, another thing that I learned that's related to the immune system is the ability to accept all, our, all of our emotions. Like we are human beings. We do experience both positive and negative feelings throughout the day. So when we spend a lot of energy, a lot of personal energy, trying to suppress those, um, one second, those things that we don't want to deal with, um, that's just taking energy from your body that your body could be using to instead fight the seas or stay healthy. So mm -hmm. where you apply your energy really impacts your, um, your health. Um, so a few things to remember, practicing forgiveness affects your immune system, taking responsibility of your life, easing up on yourself. Um, and then one more thing to add to this section of our, of our webinar um, is to remember that our ancestors, our grandparents and the people that came before us, they knew that in order to stay healthy, they had to incorporate healthy food, um, herbs, and healthy lifestyle. Like, it wasn't separate from their everyday living. It was just part of what they did daily. They took those herbs as part of their routine, as part of their daily habits. Um, so going back to that kind of lifestyle is something that could benefit us to avoid getting sick, which right now is really important, right? With um, the coronavirus that's going on and, um, all these respiratory concerns. So yeah, I think that's 
it for this slide for this um, slide and we're gonna keep moving okay so as we uh, mentioned before like um, and I just want to follow through the first Rosanna okay so life is out life is out very important so when Rosanna is talking about emotion uh, how the mind affects uh, the immunity and all that so let's talk about lifestyle okay so one of the first things that we come to when we talk about like lifestyle is diet why are we what are we eating what are we putting in our system okay there is a saying that said that um, we are what we eat okay mm -hmm. but more than that is it's also we are what we can uh, digest okay we can eat very healthy but if our digestion is not strong um, we may not be getting um, the, the, the benefit that we think that we are okay so we have to think about pro prebiotics that are food for the probiotics so what are Prebiotics and probiotics. So probiotics are the bacteria, the good bacteria that are helping us uh, to keep the immunity, to keep our uh, system healthy. Okay. And the prebiotic are those food that are gonna really um, um, be helpful for those bacteria. Okay. So we have bacteria that, that um, they need real food. What do I mean by real food? Green, green vegetable, fruit. Food that you really have to, like, you know, whole food, okay? So those are the, 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 the prebiotics, okay? Um, usually processed food and um, food like, like chemical food, I would say, like um, they are harmful for the good bacteria, okay? So they're not going to be uh, prebiotic. They're not going to be good food for the bacteria. So it's very important that we work on eating a healthy, whole food diet. And, um, and when I say diet, I'm not talking about like a week or two. No, it's a lifestyle, like Rosanna is saying. It's a part of your life, every day, you eat um, real whole food, healthy, uh, that's gonna keep your probiotic um, healthy in your system for them to do the work for you to protect you from um, um, illnesses and uh, infections, okay? So the other thing is to sleep. Okay, we can talk about food for days, um, but let's also talk about sleeping. How are we sleeping? Okay, so nowadays, sleeping problems is a very, very um, big situation, not only in the U.S., but around the world. People are having a hard time um, sleeping. So those are the things that we need to look at, okay? Um, how to sleep better. When we sleep, is when the body is um, like, like restarting again, okay? So if we don't sleep well, the body doesn't have the chance to, to have that, that, that break to heal itself. Okay, so very important that we're sleeping well, okay? So the, the other thing is stress. How we manage stress, okay? Like Rosanna say, like positive emotion, um, like a good mindset, keep your immunity up, okay? And I see them, I see like in people that are happy, that I like very um, um, strong emotionally, they hardly get sick. They hardly get sick. They're very strong. So, so that is stress. We really have to look into the mind-body connection. Okay. So, and really work on that. That what is um um that stress? The stress affects our adrenals, and then things continue until then it gets to our immunity, affecting then the whole the whole body. Okay. So, what are the different things that we can do for stress? Diet, eating well. Meditation, okay. Um, sleep, we can talk about different sleep um, hygiene, um, making sure that we go to sleep on, on like a reasonable time, um, that we are, the uh, room is completely dark, okay, that we're not eating too heavy before going to bed, that we're not exercising too heavy before going to bed. All those little things are very important, okay. So the other thing is, um, um, like the connection, connection to nature, connection to others. And that has been one of the things that during this time with the pandemic, we have been told stay home, everybody by yourself, a lot of people by themselves, okay? So we really have to also, also make sure that we're still connecting, that we're still connecting with people, that we still go out and take our little walk or hopefully the park is open that we can go to the park and connect with nature. Um, being in nature is very, helpful for the body and for the mind, okay? Um, make sure that you take fresh air, um, lay with the soil, lay with the soil, like that's part of the uh, micro, all the, uh, the um, 
um, you know, getting your microbiome, you know, that sometimes we have to expose the body to a little bit of dirt or, or soil, okay? And go out to the sun, very, very important. The sun gives you the vitamin, vitamin D. I'm gonna be talking a little bit about, about the vitamins, okay? But the sun is a natural antiviral. You go out there with the sun, take your sun like a few minutes a day, and you know, that helps your energy. Um, and stay connected with friends, family. If you have a pet, spend time with a pet. Those are the things that we need to, to you know, connect with. And then also include a habit. Okay, and then what do I mean by habit? Okay, so that's include everything that we're talking about, the diet, the sleep, how we manage stress, okay? So what are some of the healthy um, habits that we can develop, like meditation, like trying to, to just, I don't wanna even say meditation because I don't want people to think just sitting down with I feel no, but just coming down and looking within, looking within, okay? And exercising, walking, um, yoga, um, anything that, that, that keep your body moving. So for your, your lymphatic system to be more, more active. Okay. Um, so I included the circadian rhythm and the reason why I included that is because in Ayurveda, we work a lot with the, with the time, the time of the day, the time of the year, the time of the month, like, like everything is, um, connected to nature. Okay, so we are very, very um, aware, like, okay, at what time uh, we are going to sleep? Okay, at what time are we waking up? At what time are we eating? All these different things. So now they, most people are not really connected to nature. Like, um, they sleep during the day, they stay up at night. Uh, and not because they have a job or anything like that. No, it's, uh, you know. It just, that's the schedule. They spend the whole night on the computer, the on the phone, and then at that time they're sleeping. And, um, and that's something that is not according to nature. According to nature, we sleep at night, and then we up during the day, okay? So that's why I included that there, very, um, very important. And also um, the time that we eat. What time are we eating, okay? Are we eating according to, to also basically nature? Um, are we eating when we're hungry? Or are we eating just before going to bed um, when that food may not be processed correctly by the body then? Okay, so those are little things that you can um, really think about. Um, when it comes to uh, the next one is the um, vitamins. And that to me, I will say is diet. Make sure that you get your, your, your vitamins and nutrition with your diet. What are you eating? Okay, make sure that you're eating your leafy green for the vitamin C, uh, your, your colorful um, uh, veggie for the vitamin A, okay? And go out to the sun um, for the vitamin D. So try to get those um, um, nutrition through nature. Um, I know that there are a lot of that things out there, uh, pharma uh, pharmaceutical pills and things like that, that they help them, but always think, think on nature. So that way your body can do the work uh, itself. Okay, we all have the ability, that all our body, they have the ability to, to be healthy and to heal them, themselves, okay? Um, okay, so the use of pharmaceutical um, and my main chemical. So what do I mean by this? It's basically like now, for example, with the pandemic, um, a lot of people like we, with, um, with um, uh, certain conditions, like, like the taking medication has been affected by this um, very seriously. Then now we have to ask ourselves, like, like, what's the connection here, basically? Um, and it's a very sensitive, sensitive topic that, that is very important to, to talk to your doctor, to talk to your doctor, what pharmaceutical is really, really necessary, and what may, which one may, I, I may be able to, to avoid if I improve my diet and my lifestyle, okay? And then keep it, keep it to, simple um but work with your doctor on that work with your doctor you know like like okay if i have taken five medications so what can i do to hopefully bring it down to three okay because every medication gonna have that effect so those are things that, that the immune system is sometimes has to deal with and then it's, um, it's a lot of work for the for the immune system okay so just sign on mm -hmm. yeah wow thank you for all of that it's um there are things that we can't 
we can't exactly um, change overnight our lifestyle, right? But if you pick one or two things that you want to start with and keep building on that and then you know add another thing like i'm still working on sleep and circadian rhythm you know like we're we are always building up to be better for ourselves and for our bodies right so um if we can't live up to all of this then just think okay i'm gonna work on this one thing and then this one other thing until we get to that point um so we're gonna keep it moving and we we found it really important to bring this up um, at this time in where we are in society, where we are as human beings. And um, we are all aware that there are people protesting right now and um, being very vocal about the disparities and the racial issues in this country. And we cannot speak about health and we cannot speak about the pandemic without mentioning how disproportionately our communities are being affected because of the health, because um, we need to educate ourselves about how to stay healthy. Like Arellis mentioned, we're very used to going to the doctor, being prescribed the pill, being prescribed up to 10 pills and thinking, okay, I'm just gonna keep taking this and I'll be okay. But we need to realize that um, it's affecting our health and it's affecting our lives right now. We wanted to throw some of these stati statistics out um, just for everyone to be aware about how COVID-19 is impacting certain communities. For example, in New Jersey, where 21% of the population is African-American, um, I'm sorry, 14% of the population is African-American, 20% of COVID-19 related deaths are from the African-American community. So it doesn't match up, right? Um, and then other states are even more and this is all like the statistics that are coming up. We don't know where the, the statistics are coming. We don't know if they're exact, but this is what they're reporting. In um, New York, where 22% of the population is black and, and um, people of color, 28% of the people dying from the virus are black and people of color. Um, in Chicago, where 30% of the population is black, 70% of the people that are dying of COVID-19 are black. So those numbers don't match, they don't add up. And when we look at how, um, how COVID-19 specifically impacts, um, it's, it's due to the underlying conditions, right? If somebody is affected by the virus and, is, and has a super optimal healthy system, they're more likely to have like just, just a few symptoms and be okay. Um, but when you add to coronavirus, you add other conditions like diabetes, like heart disease, hepatitis B, pulmonary diseases, kidney diseases, cancer, um, then the likelihood of it being serious goes up. So um, in, order to, in order to take care of our health and our communities, we need to make sure that we are educated about how, how disproportionate, how, dis how much disparity there is um, within the health system and within our communities. Um, so that's what I want to say about that. Do you want to add anything, Aurelis? Or um, I think I think what we're doing, like uh, um, like this workshop and thing like that, is some um, uh, one of the steps that we're taking. Okay, so very important that we continue working as a community. We don't have to wait for anybody to tell us. No, we as a community, we need to support each other and help each other in this um. Uh, situation okay and this is part of what, what was happening okay with these workshops and other things mm -hmm. yeah and um, one more thing the um, disparities and the inequities are systemic they're embedded into what community gets the most access to health um, education what community gets more funding for health programming um, also the air quality the environment all of these different things affect us directly um, which is why it's super important for all of us to take it into our own hands right and make sure that we keep ourselves healthy and our people our community healthy yes okay so we're gonna jump right into herbs um so we have a lot of herbs that we listed um we may not go through all of them but if anyone wants i believe we're going to be sharing the, the presentation after so um if we uh, go too fast please know that you could read at more at your leisure. Um, but the first herb that we're going to talk about is astragalus. And that is an herb that you can, let me see, 
it's not, it may not seem super accessible, but you could find it at like Chinese, um, rest, not restaurants, sorry, Chinese markets, um, Chinatown, and um, yeah, it's a very popular Chinese medicine herb. So it's not that difficult to find. And it is an herb that is, um, has a lot of properties. It's an adaptogen, which what that means is that it brings the ba balance to the body. So if we're overstressed, then it brings back the body to a healthy balance. If we're over exerted, we need something to like keep us um, harmonized, right? So astragalus is a nice adaptogen. We all live in cities, we're all under stress. So stress is normal. Stress is something that we're all facing. So it's always important to think of how we could bring that body back to like balance. Um, so it's antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antiviral. Um, it stimulates the immune system. And in Chinese medicine, it, it is um, said that it strengthens and protects the qi. So that's your energy. That's the, um, your auric field. That's, that's what keeps you going. So we want to have that strengthened and protected. Um, let me see, it works directly on the kidneys and liver. So as your body is detoxing, um, getting rid of all that it doesn't need, the struggle is keeping those organs pretty healthy. Um, one thing I want to point out about astragalus it's one of those herbs that you can take daily um, there are no contraindications which means that even if you're taking other medications this one is safe to take um, I would speak to your doctor just just in case I mentioned hey by the way I'm taking astragalus because you know they might have some thoughts about that um, but it is something that is pretty like even for children my son has gets astragalus every now and then and um, it is good to take as preventive medicine. So, you know, take like either a teaspoon of the powder or the, um, the, the tincture. You could take that every day, except for when you're sick. So if you are starting to get sick, starting to feel like, you know, those um, first symptoms and you know, everybody's first symptoms is different. Everybody should know how, how you feel when you're about to get sick. Like you might start to get a headache or you might start you might take a nap in the afternoon when you never do. And that might be like your first call of like, uh oh, I'm getting sick. So you should start to learn your body's um, signals to you. Um, so once you do start getting sick, you don't want to take a stragglers because it's a builder. It's not um, something that's going to fight the infection. It's going to build up the immune system. Um, so that's a stragglers and echinacea. I'll just keep moving down quickly and please feel free to ask questions. Um, echinacea is probably one herb that most people have heard about. And um, it is a very powerful herb, which is why it's so popular. It's antibiotic, antimicrobial, um, antiseptic, which means it cleans out the system, um, antiviral, which is super important to fight viruses. Um, it stimulates the immune system, it's antifungal, and it goes on and on how many benefits, right? Um, it's, it clears out lymphatic congestion, which is also very important for the immune system. Um, and then it's also uh, good for blood poisoning. So like radiation and like environmental um, things that get into the blood, echinacea is nice for cleaning it out. Um, now, because it's so like, all-encompassing, um, echinacea has become so popular that now it's on the endangered list, mm -hmm. which means it's over-harvested, um, overly used, and it's not something that you need to take every day, like astragalus would, how astragalus would build up your immune system. Echinacea, the only thing it's going to do is it's going to go, well, the main thing it's going to do is going to go into your, your immune system and fight everything and anything that doesn't belong there. So you don't want your system to be on fight mode all the time. You only use echinacea when you are sick and you would only take it for seven days. If you continue to be sick after seven days of taking echinacea, then I would recommend go to the doctor or find a stronger herb because um, in seven days, if you have a cold, flu, you should start to feel the effect if you're taking echinacea for seven days. Um, another thing, do not use if, you, if your um, autoimmune system is compromised or suppressed um, because, like I said, echinacea works by going into the immune system and fighting, right? It's like warrior mode. It just goes in and just 
knocks everything out. So if your immune system is already um, compromised, or if you're taking medication, that will have an impact. Um, and then another herb that is a favorite of mine and like of a lot of people um, is ashwagandha. But actually, before I move on to ashwagandha, I want to mention one more thing about echinacea, how I mentioned that it is on the endangered list. Um, the reason because it's on the endangered list, we don't want this to be the first herb that we reach for when we're sick. And if we do, we want to use as minimal of it as we can, right? So for this reason, um, I would say it's best to use the tincture rather than a tea, because the tincture, to make a small bottle, you're literally using one tablespoon. And you could take that bottle and take drop dropper fools that'll last um, for weeks with that amount of the one tablespoon, where if you use that one tablespoon to make a tea, you use it one time, and then you've used up the medicine. So try to think of how, what is the best way to take the different medications. Um, and echinacea, yeah, I think that's it for a while. Oh, if you could grow it yourself, which um, every rabbit hole farm does, then, yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's, then you don't have to worry about, uh-oh, it's endangered. No, you're growing it yourself. You could grow as much as you want and use it um, when you're sick. Yeah. So I'll keep moving on. Um, I should, and Relis, feel free to jump in if you want to. No, you, 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 you're on the right track. Okay. okay. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is also one that a lot of people have heard about. It is an Ayurvedic herb. Um, so I'm sure Relis has more information about it. But what I'll share about it is that it is an adaptogen. Again, you want to um, maintain your body in balance. So it will bring, if, yeah, it will bring balance to your body. If you're um, overworked, underworked, just, just not right, you want to come back right to the middle. And that's what herbs do. And herbs work individually differently on everybody because they're, they're intelligent. They know your body and they'll say, okay, this one needs more energy. This one has too much energy, too much fire. And they'll do what your body needs. And they'll do the, another thing to somebody else, but it'll be exactly what that body would need. Um, uh, Rosanna, I do have something to say about ashwagandha. Okay, yeah. so um, just to have in mind, ashwagandha is warming, it's heating for the body. So, so as a result, it's not, it doesn't mean that it's good for everybody. So if your body is already um, um, like on the warm side, uh, so what are those things? Like you get rashes, your skin is too red, uh, and you feel you 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 feel the heat in your body. Mm -hmm. So ashwagandha may not be the herb that, that for you. Okay, for example, um, Kevin, my husband, he can do um, um, can use ashwagandha, but then my system um, uh, cannot tolerate it. Okay, so everybody's different. So you need to know your system and then understand. Okay, maybe this herb is not the best for me. Let me try then a struggle one that may be a little more cooling. Okay, so just to have that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We have a question from one of our participants and could you please give some information on how to make a tincture? Okay, um, let's see. Well, it's really simple, so I could do this in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, so a tincture is something that everyone can do at home. And um, so a tincture is an extraction of the herbs, right? So what you wanna do, I'll use my, up as an example um what you want to do if you have the herbs i'm going to say if you have fresh herbs if you have dry herbs you want to use one third of your jar whatever container you're using and fill it up with herbs and then add a menstruum which what that means is like add any medium that you prefer to use um for example alcohol extract is the best for a lot of herbs to extract the medicinal properties so you would fill the rest of the jar um i use brandy some people use vodka, some people use rum. Um, so you will use alcohol that I believe needs to be at least 80, 80 proof in order to have um, enough alcoholic content to extract the medicine. Um, so once you have that, you will cover it, you will shake your jar with medicine for six weeks, like daily for six weeks, and you will keep it in a dark container away from the sunlight. And you will come to it every day, you will shake it, make sure that you, know, you put some nice energy and intention to the medicine. And after six weeks, you could strain the herbs and then you have a tincture. And then you could take um, like a full dropper or 30 drops to be exact of that medicine. So that's how you make a tincture. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more. There's, we could talk about like 
different things that you could use instead of um, alcohol, instead of alcohol, you could use something called glycerin, glycerin which is vegetable based. Um, you could use oil, you could use, yeah, apple cider vinegar. Um, so I think, I hope that answers the question. Okay, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. How do you determine the effectiveness of the herbs? Mm -hmm. The effectiveness of the herbs. How can you tell if they're not diluted? You know, because people might be just picking them and it may not, they may have been grown someplace where the soil is not really effective or the soil is not doing its job because it's been stripped of this nutrients and minerals. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? I would say, Sam, um, how would you feel? How do you feel? Are you feeling an improvement? Um, are you feeling like, like, so that, that I would say is uh, one of the main things. Um, you know, if you've been taking an herb already for, for, you know, a few weeks and you're not feeling uh, much different, so maybe something's going on. Also, when we buy herbs, it's important that we uh, check the date, okay, the day and what is that herb from, okay? Um, a lot of time, like, we get things from places that maybe we shouldn't be getting herbs from, um, so I don't know, Rosanna, you have anything else? Uh, mm -hmm, yeah, um, everything that you said, and also uh, the smell, the taste, like if you're going to, a, to an apothecary or to purchase herbs, it's always, I like to smell them before I purchase them, because sometimes they will hit you in the face, and that's when you know, okay, these are strong, mm -hmm. these are and sometimes you just don't, like, it's not enough, so you get to know um, what you're supposed to be smelling. You can even taste um, certain herbs like echinacea. Actually, any herbs that are antiviral, you can just like mm -hmm. chew a little bit of it and you're going to feel like a little tingle in your mouth. And that's when you know, okay, this is, this is it's working. Okay. Um, I have a, another question regarding the pandemic and it's causing a serious Im impact economically on a lot of people. So it makes it difficult for people, for many people to um, obtain or be able to buy healthy food. What are some good, healthy, and inexpensive foods? Now, I grew up around a lot of Puerto Ricans, and so beans and rice was the food that you ate because it was <laughs> healthy, and it was healthy. You had onions and garlic, so there may be some other things you can mention. And just to add on to that, um, there's a book called, I um, can't think of the book, Murder, Inc. And in that book, he talks about how advertisers have cut their budgets substantially. However, 80% of their existing budgets are focused on black and brown people for, you know, the, food, the candy, all the junk foods that they spend considerable money on it. So you want to speak to that as alternatives to kind of encourage people to stay away from sugar, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anybody um, want to take that? So the first has to do with foods, recommended foods for people who don't have a lot of money and they can get healthy food. And the other thing is the assault on our communities to encourage people to eat food that's not healthy for them. Okay, so so um, now it's, it, I'm gonna speak from like a, a Newark uh, president. So in Newark, we have a few um, urban gardens, okay? So try to connect, try to connect with the urban gardens because um, um, we, we've been doing already for a few years and we see a lot of food growing. And um, in some time, it, like, we don't have enough people to give it to them, okay? So uh, my suggestion is connect with, uh, get, get the, the, the information on urban gardens in Newark and connect with those people and, you know, and get some of that fresh food, okay? Believe me, I know people that are looking for, right, like farmers that are looking for, for people to come in and, and, uh, um, uh, and, and take their, some of the, the product that they, that they um, grow, okay? So, um, I would encourage you to come to Rabbit Hole and, and you will see different things. Okay, so the one that, that's, uh, those are the things that I can think of. And um, you know, and you can get very, very good food without spending money like that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, to add to that, um, I'll say, like the first thing that came to my mind was the same as the is, which is grow your own, learn to grow your own. You could grow certain, um, things even if you live in an apartment if you have access to a window you could grow a lot of herbs you could grow um, tomatoes lettuces things like that and um, especially for folks with kids you know it's hard to keep um, them eating healthy when they're the propaganda commercials right everything is like eat this candy this colorful bright colors uh, but when you get kids engaged in growing their own food 
you'd be surprised how they're like, how they'll eat it. Like they'll eat, it's more likely, like someone mm -hmm. eats kale that he has seen in the garden, but he won't eat kale that we buy at the supermarket. Cause he knows he has a connection to it. He has built that relationship of um, this is, this is where it comes from. And I did this myself, I grew this. So that's um, something to like, just get kids, bring them down to the, one of the gardens, the countless gardens, right? Um, bring them down and get them engaged with like, look, this is where food comes from. And we, we are the ones who grow the food. It, it doesn't just magically appear out of a supermarket. And one of the things, Slippery Elm is not on your list. And um, mm -hmm. Slippery Elm was one of the things that people were encouraged to get at the time that this, the shutdown, that people had to start staying home. So people were going, Mm -hmm. Slippery Elm. I think there was a gentleman from Jamaica who was a healer who was on the internet who had suggested people get elderberry. I saw the elder here. And the other one was Slippery Elm. Can somebody speak to Slippery Elm? Okay. Rosanna, you got that or you want me to say yeah. something? Okay. I, I could speak a little bit about it. Um, there are so many herbs that are beneficial right now, especially with the pandemic, right? And also we have a few more herbs that we want to go through. Um, Although slippery elm is not there, I will speak on it a little bit. Okay. Um, so slippery elm is something that's called um, it's it's slippery. It's mucil mucilaginous is the word, which means it coats your throat and your lungs with like this mucus-like consistency, so that way you're able to like cough things out, and you it it protects um, your lungs and like your throat from like um, things sti sti sticking to it. So that's why I think Slippery Elm was brought up, and um, yeah. Yeah. There's also countless herbs that are similar. Yeah. And, and when we're talking about lubrication, I, I love um, uh, the, the idea of, it doesn't have to be just the slippery herbs, they are all the herbs that are also lubricating for the system, uh, and the lubrication is protection for, for the immune, uh, uh, for the lining. For the linings of the tissues, um, and that pro that protects us from getting um, viruses and, um, and bacteria and things like that in the body. Uh, for example, like our digestive system is very important that is um, uh, uh, lubricated. The lungs, um, those herbs uh, lubricate the, the lungs to protect the uh, to protect um, the lungs from the um, from um, infections and things like that. So, but there are also other other herbs like like um, uh, marshmallow root that is also very lubricating. Okay, um, uh, mullein, um, comfrey. So, so when we're talking about slippery herb, uh, uh, um, it's more the lubrication that we're looking for. Okay, so if you don't have a, a, sleep, a, a slippery herb, you can think about all the things that you may be, um, that you may have. Okay, like mullein and comfrey, those are very common. Okay, mm -hmm. okra. Okay, okra is very lubricating. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. All right, let's send, uh uh, Roxana, we have maybe about five minutes. I want to give you a chance to continue through your list and also maybe wrap up each of you say what would be the best thing that you would suggest for um, people to do at this time to prepare themselves for uh, the future if there happens to be a second wave. Mm -hmm. Five okay. minutes or so. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna briefly just mention these three herbs that are um, the last herbs that we added for immunity support. Um, so garlic is something that everybody has in their kitchen and it's something that is very accessible to everyone. It is um, antibiotic, antifungal, antiseptic, cleans out the blood, and it's good for all kinds of respiratory infections as well as heart disease. Um, one thing about garlic, you want to make sure that you use it raw or at low temperature because once you cook it, it loses a lot of its medicinal properties. Mm -hmm. um, also, you have a sensitive digestive system. I would say don't use um, garlic because you feel like a bird. Um, then elder. Elderberry was also mentioned. And um, a lot of people have heard about elderberry, both good and bad things around this time. Um, but it is an herb. You could use both the flower or the berry of the elderberry tree. Um, it is an antiviral herb. It is a um, protecting herb. It um, clears all infections and it prevents viruses from sticking to your cellular membrane. Um, so I'm gonna say elderberry is one thing that I have been using daily for the past few months as well as my son. And you can easily find recipes online for elderberry syrups, um, which are just like fun and like really good yummy medicine um, that you can take daily. Um, and then the last one to mention is reishi. And along with reishi, there are other mushrooms too, but this is the one that um, 
has a lot of like antiviral and anti um, and like supportive for the immune system. And reishi is one that you could also easily find like in um, Chinese markets or stores. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, I could talk more about it, but we'll just give you a few more. Um, Arellis, do you want to mention these? Yeah, so I added uh, neem and trifluam, which are both uh, Ayurvedic herbs. And the reason why is because people don't really hear about this herb. They're not as famous as uh, all the berry echinacea and things like that. So but it's important to know about them too, because you may not have access to all the berry, but who knows? You may have access to, to neem and, uh, and, uh, and trifluam, okay? So um, they, they both are very good for the immune system. Neem is antibacterial, antifungal. It's very good for any skin condition. Okay, and, and uh, uh, purify the blood. It's really help the blood to uh, um, be healthy and clean. Trifola is a combination of three different herbs, and all those three, the three different herbs is a balance for your system. Okay, um, it's pro, uh, a probiotic for your probiotics. It's vitamin C. It's uh, um, uh, help clean the system. And, like and when you take trifola, uh, it helps you go to the bathroom. Uh, better, okay? It, it's not a laxative, but it really helps uh, clean up the system and things like that, okay? So that's why I decided, let me let me talk about this to, to um, from a okay? Thank you. And then um, lastly, we wanted to mention a few herbs that support sleep and stress, because really that's like the main way that you can maintain your immune system is by making sure that you, you know, you have a stress as stress-free life as possible and you, that you get enough um, sleep. And um, these are a few herbs. As you can see, lemon balm, chamomile, a lot of people may be most familiar with chamomile, um, tulsi, passion flower, valerian root, and skullcap. And we give different examples of herbs and you can read on your own like how they work um, because some herbs might work instantly for some um, body types or temperaments while a different herb might work for somebody else. So while uh, I love lemon balm, it's not going to put me to sleep. It just gives me more energy for some reason. Um, but something like valerian root is something that you will take and it'll knock you right out. Like <laughs> within minutes, you'll feel like effect. It's instant, right? And sometimes you don't want that instant. Sometimes you want to be like relaxed and eased into sleep. So um, yeah, it's nice to experiment and play and see which one is the one that's going to work best for you. What we didn't talk about, maybe we have to do another one. I don't know, Dale, because plants in the house and plants are really important. And we didn't get a chance to talk about plants, but I just happened to have seen something some while ago about even in terms of, you know, cleaning your air and plants serve uh, tremendously in helping clean mm -hmm. the air. Maybe we have to do something on plants separately. Yes. Yeah, I would love to welcome you back if, 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 if you have time. So we have a few minutes. Would you... Uh, like to give some closing remarks, um, and then I'll wrap up. Mm -hmm. mm, yes, maybe we'll end with um, some information about the work we do and um, some of the, yeah, some of this stuff. Thank you, yes. How to reach us, how to find us. Um, I do a lot of work with Newark Science and Sustainability. They do have two gardens in Newark, which um, you could reach Tobias directly to schedule a time to come in, to pick up herbs, to pick up produce. And um, also I wanna mention that there is a farm to table co-op, which means that um, it's a CSA, it's community supported agriculture. So if you pay ahead of time for, for a box of veggies, um, you get one, I think it's weekly or bi-weekly. Um, how much? Every Saturday. I, let me see, does it say there? I don't know exactly. Maybe Tobias could add it in the chat or you could reach him directly to find out how much. Um, but you do get a box of food for 20 weeks from June to October of like locally grown produce from different gardens around Newark. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Oh. So, uh, Aurelis, did you want to add anything? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Like, like I want to mention that rabbit hole um, is focused on herbs specifically. Mm -hmm. So a lot of other herbs that we mentioned here, uh, we grow in, we grow here. Some of them are like, like uh, I'm more for show, uh, but a lot of them are also for distribution. Okay, so if you're interested in fresh herb, fresh herb from Newark, so you know, feel free to give us a call. Uh, we added the, uh, our phone number, give us a call and come by. 
we encourage people to come and see it, see yeah. it, touch it, smell it. So, you know, that's the real deal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to Tobias Fox, who's somewhere with us here, the founder and managing director of North SAS for success means absolutely fabulous, fabulous women. Arellis Hernandez, Roxana Marroquin. Thank you to my colleagues, Beth Zach Cohen and Reggie Blanding, who are somewhere out there too, handling some technical things. And thank you to the friends of the James Brown African American Room and our co-host, Linda McDonald Carter. Please support NORC SAS. They're on social media, at NORC SAS. Please support the NORC Public Library. And we thank all of you. This program will be on our social media feeds tomorrow. And again, thank you everyone for coming out. I think we have enough enthusiasm to do something again. Stay tuned and be safe, everyone, and good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Uh -huh.